we're back here again and this is the third of our three themes that I set out to share footage from from the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show at the NEC in February 2020. Hopefully it's of some interest so that's why we're sharing. So as long time subscribers will know and thanks to all you wonderful people out there who have subscribed. Back at the end of October I was able to collect a T6 Caravelle, that's the person carrier version but based on the T6 transporter, so exactly the same body shell, just different interior fittings. Uh, because the T6 is to be the big family car, and in other words, it's mum's comfy taxi, uh, but it also has to be a great day van, and I want it to be usable for the odd one or two night camp out when it's just really not practical to take the caravan along. I've got some pretty clear ideas about how I want to do that and a couple of additions I want to make. You know, no big massive changes, but a, a couple of things added into the existing uh, van just to make it work perfectly for us. So for example, that will include adding a fridge and so on. Uh, but before I actually get started on those things, I wanted to have a look around as many campers as possible at the show, just to check that I'm miss not missing a trick or to see if there are any other ways of doing things that I haven't thought of yet. Anyway, it would be lovely to have you come along with us, so let's get down to Hall 5. So we've just come down through Hall 4, um, so we need to head down the stairs into hall, hall 5. But what a view from up here. I mean, it's amazing. Look at all those vans. It's the call of the open road and freedom. <laughs> it's certainly strong from up here. But let's get down into the practical realities. So first up, Hillside Leisure. Our objective was to try and look at all the manufacturers displaying VWs or Ford Transit Customs, but we didn't go into depth with each one, so there won't be much cupboard opening. Loads of other excellent channels out there though for all of that. So this is just a wander through the relevant bits of Hall 5 and sharing some thoughts as we go along. Ah, now this would suit us if we wanted a camper van, so two singles downstairs and a double upstairs. can take a closer look in the back of this one. Ah, oh, it's called the Cromford. Okay, so these cubbies on the back look really useful. Somewhere to quickly stash the random bits and pieces that always end up being uh, left out at the last minute. And this sink is cool. Actually, it's just like one I've had to delivered in the last few days for the, the module I had in mind for our water system. Um, anyway, it's good to see it here. Brilliant positioning, so you can get to it from the outside or the inside. And it's in the centre, so practically if there are any splashes then it won't mark the side walls because here they're carpeted, so that, that's really sensible. This one has a Luon show. Um, handy, but I'm not sure in such a small space that would be very pleasant, unless you like the aroma of Lou chemicals. Uh, personally, that archetypal Elsan smell is associated with fantastic memories and somehow I always feel a bit warmer when I smell it. But I don't think I want to spend my life driving around with that smell everywhere I went. Loads of space in here. I wonder if this is a long wheelbase. Sorry, it's getting a bit jittery, folks. I've only just got this gimbal, so I'm really slowly getting used to it and uh, what it does when you switch between different modes. Oh, these are 6.1s. Wow, they have been busy building these rather quickly. I have to say I'm not convinced, though, by this front end. Uh, most of the reviewers seem to love it, so I'm obviously just weird. But uh, to me, it just looks a bit plasticky. I don't know, a bit spongy, a bit ill-defined. It was one of the things that actually steered me towards the T6 rather than the 6.1, which the side is really nice though. Um, it's only really different at the front end from the 6, but I really like how the new headlight units run into the name badge and then it runs on again into the side indicator. That looks good. Also, this is a lovely colour. Really classy red. Oh, nice upholstery. A bit bland though. Mm, nothing really pops here, so loads of storage though. And I like how the worktop and everything above it is in white, so it sort of separates things. Oh, now something else has caught my eye. It's this, oh, nice wheels again, but again, all just grey. Yep, this is a fantastic roof. Wherever we go, we seem to be plagued with mozzies and gnats, so I'm always on the lookout for uh, screens, and this looks great. 
Grey's a great colour, but I mean, too much of it here, and it's just boring, really, isn't it? I don't know, if only the floor had been, I don't know, a wood effect or a bamboo or even dark red to coordinate with a pop top, that would have been really something. You know, it really would have popped the colours then. Nice upholstery again, but it's flat. Hmm, it's just too monotone for me. The red stitching just gets a bit lost in these seats, I think. I like, do like that honeycomb pattern, though, and the under cabinet lighting really adds to the mood, so that's a good idea. Ooh, now here's quite some wheels. This is the new free colour, I think, the flat grey. Oh, and this is a four motion like ours. So the styling suits the drivetrain. And I like how it's been used again on the pop top, so the, the black sandwiches, the lighter grey in the middle. Although I think I prefer the optional Indian grey. Though that is something like a, I don't know, 500, 600, 7, maybe 750 pound option. Because it's one of the metallic colours, so do I prefer it? 750 pounds or whatever it is more than this black grey no probably not okay who's next oh auto campers um, I've got a real soft spot for these camper vans actually they're mostly built on transit customs because you get a lot more van for your money over the equivalent VW uh, both in features and in space a transit custom is just a fraction wider and it does feel quite a lot more spacious inside uh, so you get wider beds and, and storage cupboards as well. I also really like this company's styling. Um, I don't think they're trying to be cool. I think they're trying to be ultra practical. But they do seem to be very cool as a result. Um, the the colour combos on offer I think are great. Fabric choices and so on and leather or fabric or whatever you want. But what do I know about cool? You know, I'm a 40 something year old mummy who refuses to wear high heels. Anyway, so it looks stylish and practical to me. Anyway, we test drove one of these, the MRV, that apparently is the multi-recreational vehicle, or multi-recreational van, I don't know. Anyway, um, if we wanted something that was primarily a camper and then a car second, we definitely would have gone with that. We would have had one of those parked on the drive now. But as I said, we wanted primarily car and tow car and secondary function as a camper. So we went a different route to go with a four motion VW. Anyway. The learning points from here relative to creating the perfect day van, uh, rear side doors on both sides uh, for safety and laybys, drop offs and ventilation, fold up mini table flap at the side that's really helpful uh, and movable flexible seating and bright coloured crockery that's definitely a learning point from here. This looks great in here, I mean just these few added extras of accessories really help the whole space to, to sort of pop and be a bit more interesting and characterful. My only concern is that as you have extra stuff to make up the bed, uh, because of the flexible seating and so on, how small do all these rails fold down to and where do you store it all um, when it's not in use? For example, can it be left largely in place at the back here? Or have you got a or is there a specific cupboard that's totally full of all the bits and pieces you need? Also on the plus side, because all the seats are single and latch into these floor rails, it's much easier to take them in and out. If you ever need to, for example, I don't know, shift a piano or go on a tip run or something, might as well if you've got a van after all. And trust me that shifting the enormous three-seater bench in our caravel is quite a task. It's a beast of a seat. Okay, so on to Bilbo's. Again, standard side kitchen layout downstairs, but a side lift roof. So you get standing height all along the side and light coming in all along here. But oh my, grey from top to bottom. In my opinion, a bit boring. Sorry folks. Okay, and here we have another two single rear seats. So a good layout for reducing arguments between the kids because they each have their own personal space. And another side table, that's a good idea. This one looks like it's an inside or an outside table, usable in either place. Um, relies on a leg though, rather than being uh, on brackets like the Auto Campers one. So if you're parked on a slope or there was a ditch or something, you might have to put something under the leg to level it out. At least if the ground sloped away from the van anyway. If it was the other way around, then the table would be sloping back towards the van, obviously. You could eat at this one though, with a couple of camping chairs, so that's a good idea. And again, facilities at the back. This one has a loo boxed in though, so that's good. It looks like also there's a flap that comes down over it to create a bench seat, so that's much better. Because, you know, you, you don't need it very often, so it's good to have it used as something else and, and not on view all the time. Nice easy access to water. Okay, next up Danbury. 
This is an active choice. Active on a 102 PS? Really? Well, I can't decide if I love or hate this. I don't know how well the wood will come out on the video, but it's super high gloss. I think I love it, but perhaps there's a bit too much of it here to properly appreciate it. Perhaps it's slightly overkill. Looks like there is a pop-out table sewed in the side there though, so that's a really great use of space. Do I like these headrestless chairs? Hmm. Are they retro cool or are they dated? What do you think? And another box in new, great. Easy access to the fuses and the water tank and latchable doors to keep everything tiny. Yeah, nice. This net looks useful. But I think I'd rather have the cupboards as close to the rear door as possible to maximize the storage space. Hmm, feels really solid. That's good, there's a shelf in there too. And this has a handy pull-out shelf. Yeah, that's nice. It's a nice touch. It's also good to have this solid white on the inside to really maximise the light and to make it easier to find stuff and keep it clean. Well, to see where all the dirt is anyway. Here's a much more classic one from Rolling Homes. Is it me or is this really dated? This ladder on the back's a great idea though. I'm about 152 centimetres, so I'm really going to need to carry around a set of steps, especially if we get roof bars and put anything up there. Um, on the plus side though, this cabinet tree is beautiful. So it's really nicely shaped around the vehicle. And it's very light back here with this extra window over the sink and the hob. Wasn't shaker style the kitchen phenomenon of the 90s. Personally, I think it would look tons better set against the much darker floor, but then I guess the whole space would have been a bit darker. But then it goes to show that there's something out there to suit everyone's tastes, and what a boring world it would be if we all liked the same things. Here's another rolling home, so the loo in the rear. And across the corridor a useful flip down table, so that's good. On a bit more is this polar opposite from Danbury, jet black and neon green. And on a Ford Transit Custom, nice wheels. Someone in there looking properly though, so we won't disturb them. For me, I like the black and the contrasting colour. I don't like the square quilting on the upholstery though, somehow it just looks a bit, I don't know, saggy? Uh, so it's diamonds or honeycomb for us, okay, that's decided. <laughs> that's settled that discussion if we have seat covers made. Here's a little caddy from Volks Leisure. Lots of storage in this one. Great if you were I guess, into fishing or something. And this is one of their 6.1s. Oh, I like the swivels. It makes a great little picnic space. And the glides in the floor for the rear bench seat makes that uh, much more adaptable space. So really great for um, either people who want to stretch out or moving it forward and then having a lot more load space in the rear. And we're definitely going to need an awning. I'll have to investigate though how much they add to the height because there are a few multi-stories around by us. Ah, right, now I have this company's brochures and it would appear that they can build out whatever uber cool dream you have. So let's see what they've brought to the show this year. Ooh, nice floor, classy. Ooh, they do vinyl wrapping really, really well. That's nice. Totally unique and great quirky little features. often a fan of Twee, but by god it looks good in here. And the finish on this cabin tree is fantastic. It's sort of gentleman's club, I guess, without being oppressively so. Wouldn't be able to let the kids in, though. This again is by Dirty Weekender, and it's really caught the youngest attention. And it's a four motion like ours, so he's thinking I can put the paint job on the side of ours, I think. Luckily it's just a sticker. Although it does look great in the show, uh, but I think in real life I th I'll stick to blending in.
This diamond pattern looks good though, as does the floor and the anthracite cabinets. It's a fantastic contrast with the exposed ply, uh, the board ends there, and the yacht wood like floor. Mm, yeah, I love it. Dark inside, but good. And super flexible seating on slider rails. Ooh, these side bars are a nice idea as well. Cool. Now, this is the nice use of white and grey. Works really well in here. So, earlier we saw some really bland examples, but this slightly darker grey floor sets it off really nicely it's because it's much more interesting with the dark work surface and the bright blue and the, the navy blue seats. It's really just adding a bit of a pop to the colours. Yes, very nice. Okay, now Summit. Again, some useful cubbies. Two doors, one on each side, so that's good. Mm, but this door is totally blocked. Handy cupboard here on the back, but you can only get to it from the outside. So good for stuff you don't need very often. Uh, maybe the hookup cable or something like that. So if you were parked up with, for example, the driver next to the pavement, then your passengers couldn't get out this side. Mm. I definitely prefer the auto campers one, where there's just a little bit of space left between the cabinetry and the B pillar. It's just enough that people can squeeze out if necessary. I guess if you don't have kids or want to unload stuff, then that's not an issue. But to me as a parent, I definitely sacrifice the worktop and the storage space for that uh, flexibility of doors and the ability to be able to use both of them. And on a Toyota, it's good to see some different base vehicles. Now, oh, this is a Vision Tech van, so presumably this has a load of AV stuff in, although they're not demonstrating it at the time. Maybe they're not allowed to truly use the system to its potential. Hmm, not sure I like such a thin strip of quilting down in the centre of the seat, so that has crystallised what I'm thinking about if we have seat covers. <laughs> What's under here? That looks very interesting. Ooh, and there's a TV in the ceiling. Yeah, the kids would like that. Uh, matte black cupboards. Very chic, but again, that would have to be one the kids have moved on and we're having second midlife crises. the ceiling looks good but let's face it they both want to watch something different so I think we'll stick to iPads. Well here's something completely different so it's still a side kitchen and a side fridge area but it's so low level that actually when you're not using those facilities then uh, padded foam seats sit over the top so you've got a whole side bench side sofa and you've still got the two travel seats in the back. That's a neat little idea if you don't want oodles of cupboards and you can see there that the, the single hob just flips over from the underside of the sink, so the hob stores upside down in the sink. Yes, yeah, good use of space, uh, but not much storage space, so you wouldn't be able to carry much cutlery or provisions around with you. But lots and lots of sitting space, so if you're just using it as a, a lounge on wheels, might be a great idea. Okay, so to round up vans, here's the iconic VW California. It's very busy, so we won't go in. Uh, but the two-tone one here is the top of the range ocean so the ocean has all the gizmos the raising electric roof and so on although assuming the ordering process is the same as we we went through for the caravel there will be hundreds of options which means you can realistically add thousands of pounds to the price try out the online configurator the green one's the coast this is new for the uk this year um they've stopped doing the beach which is a real shame you know the beach is the one i actually would have gone for with a pop top roof and just the seating downstairs but the beach I would have wanted would have had two doors, one on each side, and it, will, it would have also had the 199 PS in the four motion, which, but hey ho, there we go, so we've got a fixed roof. So the coast has been available uh, in Germany and France and so on for quite some time now, but it's new to the UK. So this is basically the same layout as the ocean, but with slightly different colour furniture and less gadgets and gizmos and so on. But if you start adding lots of options, you might find yourself up in ocean price territory anyway. Uh, so if you're serious about these, then do go up to that online configurator and uh, self-educate. The one thing that, as a parent, really bothers me about these, other than price of course, is the rear door is behind the UK driver. So if this is an issue for you, if you've got little ones or pets or something, then it might be another reason to look at a conversion. So now for the other thing I want to have a look at, and that's big camper van awnings. 
The small porch awnings we have in our Ariba are actually camper van awnings uh, because we've got a rail height of two meters. So that's very handy. But I want to seek out the really big ones to get a feel for what life of one of those might be like. I'm on the lookout here specifically for the Outdoor Revolution T4. Ah, there it is. Oh, that's a T2 next to it. Here we go, this is a T4. So this goes side onto a van with this huge tunnel. And there are access doors on both ends, so that's great. So I love this front canopy, and it looks like you can get two separate sleeping areas at the back here. Perfect if you have two kids who require their own space, and then you can put adults in the van. The only issue which springs to mind is that the awning is 310 centimeters wide, plus the tunnel at 110, I think I read. And then you add the van at, uh, if I remember correctly, it's about 190 excluding mirrors. So a total of uh, 610 centimeters which, as I hoped I mentioned in the previous video about small caravans, is way wider than the five meters maximum that the Camping and Caravanning Club advertised their pitches at, um, even their pay extra jumbo ones. And although the Caravan Club pitches, well, the ones we've stayed on anyway, tend to be a bit wider, you still wouldn't get six meters ten and park correctly with your van in, in the corner on the pegas. So would you be infringing the fire separation regulations? Anyway, assuming you only use sites with non-marked pitches, then this could be fab. We had a Van Gogh polycotton tent for a while, and you know, one, the, you know what they say, once you've had polycotton, you can never go back. So let's search out the Camper Touring Classic or the Van Gogh Roan. I think those are the two of the similar designs, but that are made in polycotton. Ah, here's the Camper Touring. Again, lovely open sheltered front porch. Lovely fabric. A little bit of a living area, perfect. Wow, it's dark in here. Okay, two sleeping pods. Yes, very nice. I do like polycotton. Bet this is huge, packed up though, and weighs a ton. But you know, if the kids are getting big enough to need their own bedrooms, then they could certainly help with carrying awnings around. Okay, let's try and find the Van Gogh equivalent, as they have very good chunky air beams. Ah, here's the Hexaway. Lovely atmosphere. Won't fit on a marked out pitch. Sorry, again, no idea what I'm doing with this camera gimbal. I'll get there in the end. Please bear with me. Ah, this is the newish Tolga on the way past. Actually, as a slight aside, if you're a fellow Ariba owner and watching this, don't think you need to stick to the incredibly limited range of Ariba specific awnings out there. There are masses and masses of these small camper van awnings that will fit just fine. Also in the Van Gogh range, there's the, the very small Bondi or the Air version, which is the Siesta, which are non drive away awnings, so just perfect. Outdoor Revolution also do the Sportline Canopy. There's also the Outdoor Revolution T2, which we saw earlier. So don't think if you're an Ariba owner that your options are limited. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, heading for the Van Gogh Polycotton Roan. So here it is, same layout as we've looked at so far. Lovely colour, super chunky beams, mm, looks fab. Okay, let's have a quick look at accessories. That's handy, but my goodness, that's quite a price for a bag, albeit a large and presumably quite waterproof one. We've actually just had some Vanessa pack bags uh, that clip into the rear windows the bus delivered from Camper Fantastic. They were pretty eye-watering 300 pounds for the pair, uh, but they are made by Vald, Valde, Vald, uh, the suitcase manufacturer. So I probably shouldn't be surprised, and they do seem to be really well made, and a uh, specialist obviously to fit in that particular space, so hardly surprising they come with a reasonable price tag attached. Anyway, I'll do a fitting video at some point in the future. The other thing we've already got and we'll be reusing is one of these CFX fridges. We've got the smallest one in this range, the 35, but even then it's pretty big, or I thought it was until I saw these. But somehow here in the hall they look much smaller. If we were doing a huge sprinter or a crafter conversion or something, I'd probably get one of these double-lidded huge fridge freezers and put it on a drawer slide or make it into a sofa or something because they're super efficient. 
they run on either 12 or 230 volts and because they open at the top not the side all your cold air doesn't spill out every time you open the door hence their efficiency the downside of course is that the thing you want to get out often happens to be the thing that's right at the bottom but on the plus side this cfx 35 that we have goes all the way down to minus 22 and it's the same for these split systems. You could have one side is a minus 22 freezer, which will even keep your Hagen dazs Other brands of posh ice cream are available, totally frozen, and one side is a fridge. Ours, you have to choose one or the other, but it goes all the way from, what is it, 8 degrees, 10 degrees, all the way down to minus 22, and all on a the thermostat, so it's really efficient. So lastly, this cinema system caught our eye. Uh, they're selling it for a thousand pounds though and I'm not convinced it's any better than our 189 pounds eight man system uh, that has speakers built in as well I'll, I'll link to that in the description if anybody's interested before I get round to making the video to show how we use it so the projector sits on a shelf uh, in the back of the van here with the bed platform pushed up into the roof and it projects onto a screen rolled down in front of the front canvas when we use our eight-man projector in our caravan, we just use the front blind pulled down uh, because we've only got a single front window, so that's very handy. Or we just use an outside wall of the caravan. And although I'm sure the noise in this hall isn't doing them any favours, I can't say the audio seems particularly any better than on the £190 USB rechargeable eight-man. Okay, so that's our mega tour of camper vans and awnings and so on done. I came here with two main ideas for how to make uh, the small number of additions to our caravel to make it into the ultimate day van and family all-purpose vehicle and tow car and I don't think anything we've seen has changed those ideas at all so we're gonna head back to the bus now most probably get stuck going around the M42 and head back towards Chapel Lane as we're off home in the morning okay we're done <laughs> absolutely exhausted I think the boys are too yeah, apparently the end of the films we wanted to make from the NEC from the caravan camping and the motorhome show February 2020 I hope they were useful to you you know we set out with three clear things that we wanted to look at and that was all the stuff for kids that was the uh, small caravan so small family caravan in Canyon we find things under six meters and today was all about vans and van conversions and from the point of view of actually do you want to tow with a van uh, or a converted car like we've got on the plans to do. Anyway, really hope it was useful to you and I hope you enjoyed following along. Thanks so much for watching. It's wonderful to have you here, wonderful to have a, a community around us. Uh, so thanks for all the encouraging comments and, and things that uh, people have posted. Really appreciate those things and you know, we'll always feel deeply honoured to have everybody following our, our little family activities. So it's, it's wonderful that you're here. I guess from the vans themselves, I suppose I was a little bit disappointed. I was hoping I'd find loads of different ideas for doing things and it's always nice when you find out that actually the plans you had could be improved more. But really there were two clear designs and everybody just seemed to be sticking to those. So, so with the side kitchen um, or with the two single chairs that convert to single beds downstairs and space to get a loo and a kitchen and, and so on in the back. And that was very clear that every manufacturer was doing one of those. So I guess that's a positive to draw from it, that although there are um, perhaps only a limited number of designs, there are lots and lots of different manufacturers that are, are making those things. And so there's something out there for, for everybody. There's, you know, the super, super uber cool, super chic type stuff. There's actually classy chic type stuff. Um, there's super practical. There's, there's everything. So hopefully there's something out there to suit everybody who's looking for one of these vehicles. Anyway, from us for today and for this show, it uh, just remains to be said, thanks for watching, thanks for following along, and um, from us, bye for now. See you, bye.